Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Zero to Shiva. We are in week one playlist. We are going to learn uh, messaging basics in this lecture. I recommend you to watch through all the videos in sequence in my week one playlist to get more most out of this course. Okay, so let us get started with messaging. Let us try to understand using a scenario. Assume that I have an application A which is talking to a database and assume that in database uh, I have a customer's table where I am storing customer information and there is a method, there is a class customer service dot Java which I have written and it has a method add customer which will add a customer to customer table. So I have written it using Java but Assume that it can be written in any language. Now, suppose if I am exposing a REST API, what will happen? Any client can invoke my API and access this method by making a HTTP call, right? I hope you have gone through my previous REST API basics. So in REST, we use HTTP as a protocol to make a request. So application B can make a HTTP request and can consume this operation. But the problem with HTTP is whenever we make a request, the application A should be running. It receives a request, executes the logic, gives the response immediately. So that means I can say that application B is talking to A synchronously. Okay. B is getting an immediate response. Once the response is given, the connection between these two applications will be closed. What if the application A is down when application B is sending a HTTP request? B will not be able to reach A. Okay. Now, my requirement is whenever application B has got some data, it should be able to send the data even though the application is down. Okay. Once the application comes up, it should be able to take the data and process it. That is my requirement. So, if that is the case, what we need is another software which will be sitting in the middle we call such softwares as middlewares okay we need a software called as a middleware where in this middleware uh, we can have some destinations to which the application b can send a message so basically what application B can do is it can create a message. Oh, whenever I say a message, every message will have two parts, headers and body or payload. Even in case of HTTP, whenever a HTTP client is making a HTTP call, the client was actually sending HTTP headers and payload, right? So I can say that application B in that case was sending a HTTP message. Yeah. Now, similarly, what application B should do right now is it should create a message which contains uh, headers and payload. And this B application should send this message to a destination which is created on the middleware. And this application A should be able to uh, receive messages from this destination on the middleware. So this application B is a sender which can send a message to this destination. Application A will be the receiver. So B will send a message to this destination. A will listen for messages in this destination and receive it. Once it receives a message, it will understand the data in the message and then execute the logic. So in this case, even if application A is down, what will happen? B want to send some data. B will just create a message. And, and 
send it to this destination. That's all. This middleware is responsible for storing this message until a receiver receives the message. So, such middlewares uh, which will operate based on messaging, we call them as message oriented middleware. So, in this case, uh, the message is not processed by the receiver immediately. Whenever the receiver wants, the receiver will receive the message and then execute the logic. So, here in this case, the message is processed asynchronously. Sender will just send the message, that's all, over. Receiver will receive the message at a later point of time and then execute the logic. So, in this case of messaging, we are actually talking asynchronously. Application B and application A are still talking to each other, but they are talking asynchronously. Okay. So, in messaging, any destination, in this case, which will receive a message from a sender and stores it until the receiver has received it, we call such destinations as queues. Queue is a type of destination which can receive a message from a sender and store it or persist it until the message is received by the receiver. It is the responsibility of this MOMS message oriented middleware servers to make sure that the message is not lost. It will store the message until a receiver has received it. So, quickly to summarize, there are two applications application A and application B, and we have a MOM server, message oriented middleware server. In that, I will create a destination of type Q. Application B will create a message which contains headers and payload and send it to the Q. Application B is a sender, application A is a receiver. Okay, so in this case, the application A need not be online when application B is sending the message. And this message oriented middleware server will make sure that the message is not deleted until a receiver receives it. Now, there can be another application C, another application D also, which wants to receive the message from this queue. We can write code to receive a message from this queue. But the behavior of Q, what is the behavior of the Q? One message which is coming into Q will be given to only one receiver. So, only one of the receiver application will receive the message. Right. So, point to point. One message will be delivered to only one receiver. The message is delivered point one from one point to another point. So, if you have such a destination where one message will be received by only one receiver, such type of destination is called as queue. Application which is sending a message to this queue is called as a sender and application which is receiving from this queue is called as a receiver. For one queue, there can be multiple receivers as well, but the message sent to queue will be received by only one receiver. Once a receiver receives a message, then the messaging server can actually delete that message from the queue. <coughs> okay. And one more destination I will tell you. In the message oriented middleware, there is another type of destination called as topic. What is a topic? Okay. So, just like earlier, any application can create a message and send it to topic. Actually, we say that this application B is publishing a message to a topic. B is called as a publisher. Application is called as a publisher. And there can be multiple 
helpful applications which can be subscribed to this topic. So there can be multiple applications which are subscribed to this topic. All these applications which are subscribed to this topic, we call it as subscribers. Now, one message which is sent to this topic will be given to all subscribers. Right? This is like a broadcast, right? One message which we is sending to this topic will be received by all the subscribers. This is a kind of a broadcast. So, topic is a destination which supports publishing and subscribing. So, this topic is also called as pub sub. It's a destination of type pub sub, publish, subscribe. So, what is the difference between a queue and a topic? One message which is sent to queue will be received by only one receiver, even though there are multiple receivers. In case of topic, one message which is published to the topic will be received by all the subscribers. So, don't worry, there are some scenarios where one message should be received by multiple subscribers, then we use topic. There are scenarios where one message should be received by only one receiver. So, in that case, we use queues. Okay, this is the concept of messaging. But in Java, actually, there are a lot of servers which are implementing this messaging. There are a lot of middleware servers in Java implementing this messaging. So, in Java world, there is a specification called as JMS, Java Messaging Service. And there are servers which are implementing JMS. For example, there is a server called as Apache Active MQ. That is an implementation of JMS. Like, like that in Java world, there are a lot of implementations of this JMS specification like IBM MQ, WebSphere MQ, JBoss MQ, right? Like that, there are a lot of implementations of JMS server, JMS specification. Now, the advantage of JMS is if I am writing an application which wants to send a message to any of these servers, I can also follow JMS specification and write my code. My code will be able to send and receive from any of the implementations. So, I will be writing a JMS client code which can talk to the JMS servers. I will be using some JMS API in my code. So, whatever I, whatever code I write, the same code will be able to send a message to this ActiveMQ or IBM MQ or WebSphere. Right? I will be able to migrate between the implementations anytime. Only few configuration changes may have to be done. So, normally in Java world, we use JMS as a specification and these are all the JMS servers. So, in JMS, there is a message called as JMS message. Of course, JMS message also contains headers, payload. Whenever a client is sending a message to these servers, the message has to be in JMS message format. There are some standard JMS headers. Okay, we will see when we are talking about uh, the messaging in Mule. Okay, so that is a brief introduction to JMS. But one more thing I want to tell you. Suppose if there is an application A and application B, whenever B wants to send a message, it will send a message to a destination. Assume that I have created a destination called as Q inside my uh, server. Mom server. Assume that I am using active MQ. In active MQ, I have created a queue with some name X. 
whenever <coughs> we want to send a message to A, it will send a message to this destination. Later point of time, A will receive from this destination and do the process. But what if B wants a response? This is asynchronous communication, right? What if application B wants a response? In case of uh, HTTP, what used to happen? B will make a HTTP call. Immediately, we will get the response after executing the logic. But in case of messaging, how do we get response? Application B has sent a message. Then application A will receive it at some point later, process the message. How to give the response? So in messaging, is response not possible? Actually, we can achieve responses. We can send responses. How? Take an example. Um, let's assume that you are sending a mail to someone. You are a sender. I am talking about email. And some other recipient will be there. Now, so once a recipient receives a mail from you, how does the recipient know if he has to send a response? How does the recipient know that what is the email address to which he has to send a response back? Actually, what? Whenever we are using mail, we are using a protocol called as SMTP, right? Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. Even in case of mails, there is an SMTP message which is sent by the sender. SMTP message also contains headers payload. There will be a header called as reply to. I hope you might have observed whenever you hit reply to reply button, automatically two will be populated with the sender's address, right? Actually, in SMTP, there will be a header called as reply to. So, uh, the sender what <laughs> the sender will do? Whenever sender is sending a mail, it will create a SMTP message and this in headers, there will be a header called as reply to, which contains the email of the sender. Now the receiver, once the receiver receives it, the receiver will can see this uh, reply to header and understand, oh, if I have to send a reply, I have to send a reply to this email ID. Similarly, in a uh, JMS message, there is a header called as reply to. So whenever a sender is sending a message and if sender is expecting a response, what the sender has to do is, sender has to give the value of reply to as another queue. Assume that there is one more queue called as uh, Y and B wants responses in Y. So whenever B is sending a message to this queue, in the reply to header value, it will it will actually give the value as y. This is a queue name. Now, when A receives this message, the application A will execute whatever logic it has to execute. And if it has to send the response, it will send the response to this another queue y. My application B can be configured to listen for messages inside y. Take it. So, like that, in messaging also, we can achieve request reply as well. Hey, don't worry, we are still in basics. Once we implement in Mule, you'll understand how to send a message and how to get responses as well. So before we actually start Mule, I wanted you to understand about JMS. You understood about two types of destinations, queue and a topic, right? That is good information to get started with Mule. This prerequisite is sufficient. That's all for this lecture about messaging. I just told basics whatever is required. I will see you in the next lecture where I am going to talk about SOAP web services. See you in next lecture.